you know, I thought I'd get a few WWE topics off my mind, you know, listening to a lot of the clips from different podcasts and hearing other, reading what other um, sources have to say and, you know, reading certain spoilers, if you know what I mean. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to get some of it off my mind, um, if you will. You know, first of all, let's talk about Total Divas. Uh, the reality show, of course, is supposed to be coming. Uh, the reality, sh- the real, <laughs> the reality show is going to be debuting this Sunday uh, on the E Network, and obviously going to be replayed, possibly after Raw on USA. My honest opinion about Total Divas is I don't think it's going to have much of a shelf life. I, I really don't. I mean, I could be wrong because people do like reality shows and this is the kind that kind of goes behind the scenes and everything, but I, I don't see it really having much of a shelf life unless it really succeeds, really goes behind the scenes, really, you know, goes behind the scenes like never before and really draws, you know, the fans in and draws the viewership in and uh, but I, I really don't, because according to what numerous sources have said, uh, the reality show is basically going to be storyline based. I mean, everything that's going to go on there is storyline, it's scripted, and it's already pre planned, if you will. And so, pretty much, it's like WWE is just doing another diva show, just doing. So all WWE is basically doing with Total Divas is just expanding the storyline, the Diva storyline, the Divas storylines elsewhere. Try to put more focus on the Divas and their storylines to you know get more people to pay attention to them. But there's a problem with that though. You see, the two main Divas right now that are being focused on the most, which are Caitlyn and AJ, are not in this thing and and are not being talked about as far as uh, Total Divas go so um I again I I honestly just my honest opinion I don't see it having much of a shelf life I think it's going to run for one season and that's it and they're putting it on Sunday evenings they have any idea what's going to happen people they're going to have a pay per view next month SummerSlam and it's going to run in conjunction with that show and then not just that they got Sunday Night Football coming up and they're going to have the MLB playoffs the major MLB playoffs the World Series and all that it's not good timing for a show like this it's not and I, I don't like I said I don't think Total Divas is going to last I mean it's a I'll, I'll say this it's ambitious for them to try this out and see where it goes. That's fine. But, you know, I would have just, honestly, if I was WWE, I would have waited until I finally got my network off and running to put Total Divas on there. Because at least I know, from my own accord, from with my own money, uh, you know, that I would be able to have a show on my network it's featuring my talent in sort of a behind the scenes uh, situation. Uh, behind the scenes way. But the honest truth, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I don't think it's going to last a season. Again, mainly if you read online, it's basically to further the storylines of the divas, if you will. Let's say one of the divas on the show wins the divas title. It's going to focus down the line on the challenger and the diva who and the person that's the champion and all the other divas focused around that. The point is, it's all pre-planned. It's all storyline based. And if there is a bit of reality, a bit of like, you know, oh, I didn't... I, uh, and if there is a bit of real reality, in other words, like unscripted in there... You know, I'll be totally shocked. I mean, it seems to... I mean, I'll give them this. It seems that there are going to be some uh, certain parts throughout the series that will be unscripted, that will be truly behind the scenes. Uh, but as far as the rest of it goes... Let, let's, let's just put it this way. 
75% of this is going to be scripted and pre-planned. 25% of it's going to be real reality. That's how I look at it. And, you know, on Raw this past Monday, we pretty much got a taste of how scripted and pre-planned that 75% is. Eva Marie, the way it looks like to me is whoever is in charge of the show and whoever is in the higher ups, if you will, really is getting behind Eva Marie. It's like, you know how they always say in reports, Vince McMahon or Triple H is really behind, is really behind and is really behind and supporting the likes of this person or that person, and that's why this or that person's getting the opportunities that they got. That's how I see it with Eva Marie, and that's what tells me seventy-five percent of the show is going to be pre-planned and scripted, basically going to be worked right into the storyline aspect of Raw and SmackDown and main event and superstars. That's the way I look at it. And maybe even NXT. Because like I said, why would you have Eva Marie suddenly come off as a heel in her first official on-screen debut for the WWE? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You know, why would you do that, you know, if it was just going to be truly reality? You wouldn't. But WWE did. And that's what... And to me, they wouldn't do this with Eva Marie unless somebody, like, say, a Vince McMahon or a Triple H, was a, was a strong backer for Eva Marie. Say, hey, this girl's got talent. You know, she may not be good in the ring just yet. You know, with a lot of training and everything, she could be good. But... Charisma wise, personality wise, she's got the total package to get over as a heel. And the statement that she made on Raw kind of gave me an idea of exactly where they're going to go with her. And the direction I feel they're going to go with her is she's going to be someone that's going to manipulate her way to the top. She's going to manipulate people like, let's say, a Brad Maddox or maybe a Vince McMahon or whoever, to get to the top of the Divas division, if not to the top of the WWE. That's the impression I got this past Monday. And again, it just, the, and all, and again, the impression I got about the show is 75% of it's scripted and pre-planned, 25% of it's going to be reality-based, real reality-based. <sighs> okay. Now let's talk about John Cena, Daniel Bryan. For some of you that were in Laredo, Texas last night for the raw taping for this upcoming Monday because they're going on the Australian tour, you pretty much already got an idea of what's going to happen and pretty much had an idea of what was going to happen this past Monday. Basically the storyline is that even though the match is officially signed sealed and going to be delivered storyline wise Vince McMahon does not want Daniel Bryan competing basically according to numerous according to some people that were at the event that were at the raw taping and we pretty much got this idea already from this past Monday Vince McMahon storyline wise wants Cena to defend against somebody similar to Triple H in other words someone that's big muscle bound and can basically make it look like it's an even match. And to me, this almost sounds like storyline-wise, again, and as crazy as it sounds storyline-wise, this plays into basically, this is just another part, believe it or not, in the whole McMahon, Triple, in the whole Vince, in the whole McMahon, Triple H power struggle. The whole McMahon, Triple H, Stephanie, whatever you want to call it, power struggle. That's what it is. It's basically what this match between Cena and Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam is part of. It's not about, hey, you know, let Daniel Bryan's the hottest thing going right now. Let's give him this shot. And let's, unless they change their mind, let's give him the belt. You know, and then have him feud with Randy Orton. Because Randy Orton, apparently, according to plans, even though plans could change, is supposed to come in, maybe RKO Daniel Bryan, have the bell rung, and... 
cash in the briefcase and win the belt. So, to me, I look at this like, you know, it's all part of a storyline that even though Vince wants somebody else to face Cena, and he's going to do everything in his power from this time forward to the 18th to make it, 18th of August to make it happen, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And honestly, we don't know what WWE is going to do, I'll be honest with you. In between now and then, you know, so they could make it look like Daniel Bryan may be in or out of the competition or out of the match. We don't know. I mean, if I'm WWE and I really want to throw people for a loop, you know... I have Daniel Bryan. I'm pretty sure they're planning this already. I have Daniel Bryan get attacked. And unless he gets cleared by SummerSlam, basically have him attack maybe six days before SummerSlam on Raw or Smack Raw, and basically have a storyline going, I'm pretty sure they're planning something like this, to where if he can't compete by SummerSlam, then somebody else is going to take his place. Then Vince McMahon's going to choose somebody else to take his place, but we don't know yet. But we won't know who that is. Like I said, unless they're planning to do that, you know, I, you know, I still just see, I, I, I don't see the match being changed or anything. I mean, this is basically what they're planning to do, and for some reason, odd reason, we're going to have the Bellas probably involved, and who knows what's going to happen with them, but we'll just have to wait and see. But to me, the way, when I look at the Cena, Daniel Bryan thing, I look at it as being nothing more than just another part of the McMahon Triple H power struggle story power struggle power struggle storyline. I mean, we all know basically what the storyline is leading to, what revelation it may lead to. The whole thing about this whole Triple H McMahon storyline is to lead to the fact that McMahon wants Triple H to resign as COO of the company storyline wise give the position back to him, Vince McMahon, and go back to and for Triple H to go back to being a competitor in the ring. So, and that's my dog in the background, she's snoring. But basically that that's that's the way I see that's what I see when it comes to this whole Daniel Bryan's John Cena match at SummerSlam. It's going to be a good match, don't get me wrong, because Daniel Bryan can bring out the best in anybody. You know, but to me, it's basically going to be, it's basically another part of the McMahon Triple H Power Struggle storyline. That's what it is. Now, as far as the Wyatt family goes, you know, they talk about the fact that on television, and you even have this Don Tony and Kevin Castle and some other people talking about how controversial some of the promos Bray Wyatt has been doing, and how controversial the vignettes and all that have been. And to me, I, you know, I agree they kind of borderline controversial, but you see, what WWE is trying to do is they realize they're in a situation right now to where they can't really go, they can't really take it to that next level with certain uh, groups or individuals. They want, to, they, they want to, but they can't because they're in a situation with these sponsors and, and all that and trying to bring in more of the mother-child mother audience, if you will. They realize that they got to be careful. And all the Wyatt family is, basically, all the Wyatt family basically is, and that's my stomach, all the Wyatt family basically is, is a very edgy PG product. It's basically a cult 
gimmick that's going on. Now, obviously, it's getting over with the fans. This whole Wyatt family, if not Bray Wyatt himself, is getting over with the fans just like the Shield did. But the question is, but I know the question a lot of people have is, how far can WWE go with this gimmick? Go? Uh, how far can they go with the gimmick? How far can they let Bray Wyatt, you know, you know, his promos and vignettes, how far can they let those go before maybe they get a call? before they get a call from, let's say, the FCC or a certain group or something like that, and tell, to, that tells them, hey, this wrestling gimmick you got going on here, we don't like it. You either tone it down or you get rid of it, or we're going to do such and such, we're going to report you, blah, blah, blah. How far are they going to be able to go with it? And, and I know a lot of fans are hoping they go far. They go very far with it. And I'm hoping for that, too. But... Reality is, you know, you gotta, but the reality is, you gotta ask yourself how far can they go with it? And my, my honest opinion is they're gonna go as far as they can. There's, there's no doubt about it. They're gonna go as far as they can. You know, I know a lot of fans of, of fans are asking the question of could the Wyatt family be the key? Can the likes of the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, uh, aka Brody Lee, Eric Rowan, could they be, along with someone like, say, Dean Ambrose as a S.H.I.E.L.D. and maybe Seth Rollins? Oh, Seth Rollins. Rollins, if you will. Could they be the key to the next era here in the WWE that allows them to slowly go from PG back to TV-14? Slowly. If you know what I mean. Or allows them to go with a TV-PG with the TV PG slash SLV rating. You know what I mean? It's like it's a PG product, but it's SLV. Or TV PG LV E. Or something like that. How far can they let them go before... Not oh, how far, but... Basically, could they be the key to that? To WWE going from TV PG V... To TV PG LV or TV PG SLV or maybe just back to TV 14 SLV. Could they be the key? And honestly, you never know who could be the key. You never know who could be that catalyst that takes it to the next level. CM Punk obviously was the was basically the foundation, as a lot of people say, of you know the was the foundation. Of the first step was the first piece of the foundation, that first slab of cement that was put into the foundation that was that's going to build towards the revitalization or the return of a more aggressive, more attitudinal error with a rating of TV 14. A lot of people look at CM Punk as being that that cat that foundation that began. That first slab of cement that began that foundation, that building process to getting back to that, to that place that a lot of wrestling fans, a lot of sports entertainment fans, want to get back to. That you know they that a lot of fans, wrestling and sports entertainment fans, believe that once they get back to that, to something similar to what they had in the past, it's going to allow all the superstars and the divas to be more expressive, to have more freedom, to be more creative. It's going to allow the creative team to be more creative. It's going to allow them to be more expressive. You know, it's going to allow them to come out and say, hey, you know, we want to do this because it'll definitely get people's attention. You know, things like that. And a lot of people look at the likes of CM Punk, like I said, as being the one that began, that was the kind of like that first slab of cement that you put down to begin the foundation to build, that you put down as a foundational piece for that new building, that new building or that remodeling, that restructuring of, of your already established building or business 
And now when they look at people like the Wyatt family, they look at them as being another part of that foundation, another piece of that foundation that's being put into place. They look at people like, you know, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins as being that part of that foundation. They're looking at people like Daniel Bryan, Bryan himself, as being part of that foundation. They're even looking at people like Leo Kruger in NXT as part of that foundation. Paige, the uh, NXT Women's Champion, as part of that foundation. AJ as well, and maybe even Caitlyn. They're looking at all of them as being part of that foundation. Heck, even the girl I mentioned, mentioned at the beginning, Eva Maria and JoJo, and Natalia as being part, Eva Maria and JoJo, and Naomi being part of that foundation that's slowly building towards getting to that rebirth or resurrection of that error of an error or the birth of an error that's similar to what they had in the past and the resurrection of that TV 14 rating. They look at that and again they look at the Wyatt family as being the, Wyatt, the likes of the Wyatt family as being part of that foundation that's going to get to there. Because they feel that the Wyatt family can help get to that TV, get back, get the WWE back to a TV 14 rating, a TV 14 SLV rating, that the something like the Wyatt family will be able to do more creatively than they can right now. I mean, think of it this way: in some of the vignettes, they always would show a piece a line of barbed wire. Think of it this way: if they could help get back to that TV 14 rating. Imagine them coming out to attack somebody and seeing someone like Bray Wyatt or maybe even Luke Harper holding a piece of barbed wire over somebody else's mouth. That could happen. That could happen. In the eyes of fans that look at the Wyatt family as being part of that foundation, being that, being one of those keys to bringing back the TV-14, even if you will, going to an error and, and getting WWE into an error, error that was similar to the attitude and aggression error. You know, they feel that if the white family, they, they feel the white family could do that. And again, it's along with everybody else that I mentioned, they feel that they are part of that foundation. They are part of that building process. But right now, being in the TV PGV error, they can only go as far as that's going to let them. Right now, they're more of a PG-13 group. Because I want you to notice the time frames, the time time frames, the hours that the Wyatt family appears in. The 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock hours, or 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock if you live in the central area. They appear in those hours. And by appearing in those time frames and those hours, it shows that they're the kind of gimmick and group that's not for little kids. So even though little kids are watching them in the audience. <laughs> but still, I feel they're going to go as far as they can with the Y family. I feel they're going to do it, do as much as they can with them in this era. And again, just like a lot of, and again, there are those fans out there that feel that they, along with everybody else that I mentioned, are part of that foundation, are now just another piece of that foundation, that nation, and that restructuring of the company that's going to get them, get that it's going to get as they would hope the company back to where it should be in their eyes, and that's a TV 14 rating and a more in an er, er, into an era, era if you will, similar to the attitude, if not more of the aggressional era. So that's all I'm going to say on these uh, three WWE topics. Let me know what you guys think about them, and I'll talk to you later.